I'm going to read you this report from my car, which I was going to be delivering to you this morning, uh, live in Johannesburg. Unfortunately, due to unfortunate serious circumstances, I have been unable to get there. So here is my, my initial report, and then we can have questions and answers after that. Understanding local differences is a key to successful mass retailing. When Walmart entered China a decade ago, it was surprised when puzzled shoppers ripped open bags of frozen food in its stores and started serving themselves portions. They had never seen frozen aisles before. Avoiding mistakes like this has never been more crucial, with sales in home countries in Europe and the United States falling identifying and breaking into new markets, primarily in the developing world like South Africa, will be a major factor for future growth and profitability of the world's largest retailers. So who are they and who will emerge victorious? Our research was carried out by Cantor Retail, Manchester Business School, The Grocer and SJM, and covers the top 50 retailers of the world, where Paul will be presenting slides to you as I talk. Tesco is expected to turn in the steepest of compound annual growth over the next five years at 7%. The calculation was made partly on its heady expansion since 2010 and its now strong position in China, Korea, Malaysia and Eastern Europe. But it's not all about geography. Tapping into the continuing ev evolution of online retail, particularly click and collect, developing own label, and the perfection of a wide range of formats puts Tesco in a strong position. A lot of retailers are now turning to smaller store formats and a means of filling in existing markets and growing new ones. Tesco has considerable expertise in small store formats and the opportunities for Tesco Express in China are staggering. International expansion is nothing new for the world's biggest retailers. Last year, revenues outside its domestic market accounted for 27% of Walmart's $421.9 billion in sales. At Carrefour, international sales were 59% of its $124.3 billion of sales. Tesco's international sales were 33% of its $93.1 billion in sales. And Metro's group's international sales were 62% of its $87.3 billion. But the market is changing. As well as slowing growth in many markets, new delivery mechanisms, most notably the internet, are challenging conventional models. The inclusion of Amazon.com at number 28 in our chart is no fluke. It is expected to grow by 22%, more than any other retailer, and 46% 46, 46 of its sales are outside its home market. Last year, last year, it launched a food and drink delivery service in the UK and Germany, offering 22,000 products. I say let's wait and see. Maybe they won't be a threat to the large retailer, but they'll certainly make us all think as consumers about how we should shop for food in the future. Also, it puts other players in mind for grocery shopping going forward, like Akado and Facebook. The game, of the, global the game of global domination is also a risky business and the world's largest retailers have increasingly been forced into embarrassing exits from countries. Walmart quit Germany in 2006 and Russia in 2010. Carrefour left Japan and Mexico in 2005 and left Russia last year. Metro have pulled out of the Morocco market and is now considering pulling out of the UK market. And there are also strong rumours that Tesco will be following Carrefour in Japan. And Tesco's CEO, Philip Clark, has gone public to say they do not rule out pulling out of the USA venture with Fresh and Easy. Which is hardly surprising considering they've already lost $900 million since they started. Consolidation is taking many forms. Last month, Carrefour won sh shareholder approval of its spin-off discount retail chain, Dart, which has outlets in southern Europe, China and South America. Dyer's name has been become successful in its own right. Carrefour's profits fell by 35% in its domestic market last year thanks to the downturn in the economy and fierce competition, 
but with its presence in 31 countries, its international performance is more impressive. In Brazil, where sales account for 8% of Carrefour's turnover, it is rumoured to be planning a merger with the country's largest retailer, which could spark some heavy fighting with, with the other French chain, rival Casino, who happens to be in a kind of relationship with the Brazilians already. South America, and especially Brazil, is very lucrative for the big grocery players, thanks to rising middle class and surging consumer spends. South America is certainly a key focus for Walmart. In Brazil, it plans to invest $759 million in 80 new hypermarkets, discount stores and grocery shops. In Chile, too, it acquired a controlling stake in a leading retail distributor. Carrefour, back in Western Europe, are investing $2.2 billion in refitting 500 of its superstores across Western Europe. This new format concept is called Carrefour Planet, which is another big store format offering low prices and white label products. There are many retail analysts who say that this is the wrong move for Western Europe with an ageing population, time, uh, time poor population as well, and large store formats are, are, not, are nothing new and have been losing popularity. On the other hand, Walmart's new Walmart Express, a name many experts think they pinch from Tesco, and, and is a small form, format which arguably makes greater sense. Last year, Walmart International increased its selling space by about 8%, generating a 12% improvement in sales. In the USA, however, where Walmart has suffered eight consecutive quarters of falling sales, its express, its, its express market stores are being rolled out to fit into dense urban areas and serve more remote rural communities. It does seem now that Walmart is obsessed with the small store formats, as evidenced by opening the Walmart Express in the US and buying the Netto in the UK. They're also opening small stores in China, so it does seem that Walmart very much have small stores as part of their global strategy. Tesco, a convenience rollout in the UK, has been going on for years, and a similar strategy is underway with their competitors Sainsbury's, Asda and Morrison's. In the meantime, sales, the established business, has fell for the second consecutive quarter in sales in the UK. Tesco is also very focused on its e and commerce strategy, and Walmart also provides a, is providing a plan to drive its online sales, especially in Brazil and China, by consolidating e-commerce activities in a single global division. But in terms of markets, it is the East that holds the most attraction for the global retail giants. Staking its claim more recently has been Tesco. It has used its vast resources to develop strong, a strong foothold in China and for the Far East in general, and it is now the biggest retail in Korea, generating annual profits of around £300 million. Earlier this year, it agreed a joint venture to develop three Chinese shopping malls with Tesco hypermarkets, adding over 100 stores to its already in the country. The biggest untapped market, of course, is India, caused by restrictive laws and bureaucracy. However, last month, the Indian government scrapped these laws, which now opens huge potential. Tesco and Walmart already have wholesale partnerships in India, but I'm sure there will be significant movement by them and other global, global players as the restrictions are moved. The Middle East is another interesting market. Carrefour having been the dominant player here and are the first multinational retailer to enter Iraq. Its local franchise partner, Majid, Fatin, Majid Fat Al Fatain Group, are planning to open 11 more hypermarkets in the Gulf this year. And now Walmart has turned its attention to Africa with a 51% 51 stake, 51 stake in Massmart worth $2.4 billion. This I see as a marriage in heaven for the African consumers. I also see it as a good investment for Walmart if you compare it with the 2.2 similar amount of money that Carrefour are investing in refurbishing their hypermarkets. This is a very wise move. I'm also aware of two other global players that are looking at the South African market with, with, with eager eyes. And I'm sure watch this space and we'll see more coming.